Hello and welcome everybody. It is Coach Action Jackson and I'm here with another episode of Client Success Stories. I've got my man Deepak here and he lost 23 pounds, 7% body fat, 7 inches off of his waist, 3.75 inches off of his hips and added an incredible, a mind-blowing 400 points to his strength score. And oh, by the way, he's got some vascularity in his arms and a lot more mental fortitude also. So Deepak, incredible. Welcome to the program. Why don't you introduce yourself? You know, thanks for having me, coach. So uh, my name is Deepak. Recently turned 37 years old. Um, I work out in Wisconsin. I'm a physician, a retina specialist by training, and have a kind of very busy day-to-day -day schedule. My wife, Annie, who is also part of the program and also had tremendous gains and successes through the 16-week the, uh, program, uh, also, you know, leads a pretty busy life. So we have two small children, age three and one and a half, and they keep us on our feet. But unfortunately, it also means they take up so much of our time to where it becomes a little difficult for us to prioritize, you know, personal well-being or personal health. And so to kind of give you a little bit of a background of where I started from, um, I was always a little bit health conscious at, at some level. Obviously, you know, being in healthcare and being a physician, I deal with other people's health on a day-to-day -day basis, but sometimes at the sacrifice of your own well-being and your own health. And so I was always kind of aware of what's the right thing to do and what you're supposed to do. But, you know, taking those building blocks and applying it to my own life and my own situation sometimes was the disconnect. And so, you know, I think, uh, you know, going to the gym, uh, trying to eat healthy, thinking I was doing the right things. Uh, doing intermittent fasting. These were all kind of techniques that I was employing at least at some level uh, with, you know, some regularity prior to joining your program, but I would just not see the gains. So I would not notice changes uh, when I looked at myself in the mirror. Um, I would not notice changes on the scale. And ultimately for me, kind of my uh, overall, you know, uh, uh, amount of energy, my energy level was just lacking. And so what the uh, initial kind of aha moment for me was uh, when, I, when I reached out to you was when uh, back in the summer, you know, at that time we had our two-year-old son and, uh, you know, running after our two-year-old, I couldn't do it. Uh, you know, I was doubling over, you know, panting, hands on my knees. Uh, and I just thought to myself, this isn't normal, you know, and I have a tonal, I have a Peloton, you know. I'm paying monthly fees for these, uh, you know, expenses, uh, expensive pieces of uh, equipment and hardware that, you know, I wasn't necessarily putting time or investing into. And I uh, kind of used that moment to just say, this is just not normal. You know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 36 at the time and, you know, I'm really struggling to keep up with a two-year-old. That's just not normal. And so I reached out to you coach and, you know, the rest is history. So I think, uh, that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of where I started from and what was the impetus to kind of uh, a start on this journey. Wow. So you have the tonal, you have the Peloton, you have all the tools, you've tried a lot of the tactical things, but it sounds like you were just having kind of trouble putting things together and really getting the types of, of leverage to get the results that you wanted. Does that sound about right? I don't want to put words yeah, in your mouth. Yeah, no, I, I think that's pretty accurate to say. I mean, I think I knew at some point once we had kids that, you know, we used to have a membership at the Y, used to go to the Y when uh, Annie was pregnant and, you know, before we had kids. And once the kids came around, that just became a little more difficult. Uh, and so I said, hey, let's invest in home gym equipment. And so get a Peloton, get a Tonal. And, you know, initially we used it. I used it. I was pretty faithful about it. And then, you know, a few months in, you kind of, you know, life gets busy, work picks up, you know. Uh, parental responsibilities because you have kids at home, then you have your second kid and everything kind of fell to the wayside. And so, although I had the tools there, it, it was very difficult to motivate myself, even to just go down to my basement where literally, you know, you're not driving to a gym, you're just rolling out of bed and, and going down two flights of stairs to try and get your workout in. I found that challenging enough. And so I think committing myself to a program where, uh, you know, honestly, there, there's a community there to support you, there's, you know, the, the, uh, the idea that you're investing, you know, uh, not just the time, but the, you know, the, the financial commitment to a program to kind of keep you honest. And, and, and at the end of the day, that's kind of what I looked at it as, is I need some accountability. And if the accountability wasn't being generated internally, I needed some sort of pressure that would force me 
to try and make the right decisions, not just working out, but also eating for that matter. Because, you know, again, I, was, I alluded to a couple of minutes ago in the intro that I was trying intermittent fasting. You know, I, I'd go, you know, 12 hours without eating, you know, but I wasn't tracking macros. I wasn't doing the, you know, the basic building blocks that you were alluding to that, uh, you know, we should be doing. And so uh, even though I was intermittently fasting, not eating at work, I'd come home and before dinner, I might, you know, eat a small bag of potato chips or, you know, kind of do the little things that were just uh, chipping away at the gains that I may have been making uh, on a diet standpoint. Uh, and so it was just the ac idea of accountability and, and being part of a program that could kind of rope all these things together. And I kind of knew in my head, hey, if I had the rubric or a game plan, I know I could follow it. I know I could follow directions. Um, I just needed somebody to guide me or, or, you know, basically give me the tools to succeed. Wow, that's that's incredible. And I really want to acknowledge you for having the self-awareness to, to, to be honest with yourself and say that. Because as a physician, as obviously a very intelligent, you know, smart guy who can figure a lot of things out on, on, on your own, and to recognize that you need to have a little bit more accountability, maybe a little bit more skin in the game to have a community, a support system, because a lot of people think, oh, I can figure this out on my own. I could do it myself. And one of the recurring themes of people who do these interviews with me, who, who get to this level is that they find ways of stacking the deck against them, putting and creating a little bit of, of pressure on themselves, good pressure that is to force, you know, have a forcing function so that they do follow through. It's the same reason why I have business mentors and, and colleagues and, and people that coach and, and, and mentor me to have that accountability. I'm doing a coaching session with somebody this week who I paid over $1,000 for to, to go through some marketing stuff. Why? Because it's a forcing function. There's accountability there. I hold myself accountable to my clients. That's what helps you know me on my health and fitness journey. So we all need to have accountability in some way and to think that you're just going to magically do it and your future self is going to be stronger, better, more disciplined, and more capable than your, your past self or your current self, it's just crazy to me. So I want to acknowledge you for that. That's uh, really incredible that, that you came to that on your own, which is great. Now, I also want to acknowledge and, and kind of dig in a little bit as obviously somebody who's got a ton of career responsibilities, family responsibilities, kids, wife, you got all of these things to recognize and say, hey, I know I need to take care of myself. That's really big. A lot of people struggle with that. Why do you feel like you were able to recognize that? And why do you think so many other people don't get to the point where they really do prioritize their health and fitness? Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a good point to make. I think sometimes we follow, fall on our laurels of our, of our age, you know, and we say, hey, we're in our 30s, so we're just more durable. We're able to get things done. You know, we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, being on a ton of medicines or, or, uh, you know, uh, going to the doctors all the time, you know, you get your annual physical and your blood work done, you know, once you're, you know, 30, 35. And if everything checks out, you think you're healthy. But I mean, there's a difference between not being, uh, you know, medicated necessarily, or not being on, you know, a ton of different meds, uh, versus being healthy, you know, I think that there's a gap there. And so I think for a lot of us, we think because, hey, the family doctor told me at my annual that I'm checking all the boxes, my BMI is normal, that, you know, my cholesterol is normal, my blood pressure is normal, that I'm healthy. But I would argue that there's a difference between physical fitness uh, and being unfit and being healthy and unhealthy. And I think that you can be uh, healthy and unfit. And I think that's kind of where I found myself in. Uh, but I think, again, what prompted me was activities that I thought that I should be able to do that I wasn't able to do without huffing and puffing, that became a, a little bit of, of an issue for me. And I just looked at it as, uh, um, you know, something where, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that needs to be addressed. And so uh, I think a lot of us, unfortunately, you know, rely on our youth if, if we are younger. Uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, just as an aside, as, as physicians, I mean, as, as physicians, a lot of us are probably some of the most unhealthy people out there. You know, we may not uh, be physically fit. We may not be on a lot of medicines or any medicines for that matter, but we are just unhealthy in the sense that 
we are sleep deprived. We, you know, because of career or other responsibilities being on call, we just don't kind of put the uh, emphasis on, on, on the right parts and we end up burning out. And kind of another reason why I wanted to prioritize getting into this program and uh, using it as, as a spark plug to get into shape was, you know, I, I heard about a couple of physicians who passed away, you know, sudden cardiac death, you know, uh, in their 40s. And, you know, I'm not too far away from being in my 40s. And it's a scary prospect to think that, you know, uh, you can just drop dead. Uh, and, and that can be anybody. But, you know, let alone when you see it happen to somebody who understands all the ins and outs of health being, a, you know, being a physician, it's, it's even more scary. So it, you know, hearing these anecdotal stories of folks who ended up with, you know, terrible health complications, being on the slightly younger side, also was a little bit of a reminder to me to say, hey, you know, nobody here is immune. This can, you know, this can happen to anybody. And um, we just really need to do what we can uh, to prioritize ourselves, not even just for our own well-being, but the fact that, you know, we're supporting a family at this point. You know, if you have a wife and children, you want to be, make sure that you're doing the best to invest in them by investing in yourself. Yeah, not only are you looking after patients, but you're also looking after your family. So you're leading by example, and you have to take care of your own health and fitness before or so that you can take better care of all those other people that you have responsibility to look after. So I commend you for that. That's fantastic. Now, you, you talked a little bit about sort of reactive versus proactive there, health and fitness. And um, I don't know if, you, if you've uh, read anything from Peter Atia in his, his book, Outlive, he talks about medicine 2.0 and medicine 3.0. And he talks about being very reactive. And that's where most people are, where if they aren't diagnosed with something, if they're not to your point on meds or anything else, then everything's fine. And he's like, no, you need to be proactive and you need to be thinking ahead. And not only do you need to be thinking ahead, you probably need to be in much better shape today currently than you think you need to be because in the future, you're only going to decline. So you need to be far better today if you want to sort of extend your life out and extend at least a high level activity and, and to be able to do the things that you're doing today, you need to be so much better than you, than you, than you think you need to be. Um, so I think that's uh, an important point as well. Now I want to shift gears a little bit. So I know I want to talk about some of the obstacles you might have faced. One of the obstacles that you, you certainly faced was being a vegetarian. So a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, it's just harder to get protein and you can't build muscle and you can't get stronger. And, and there's a lot of sort of limiting beliefs around that. But as a vegetarian, you went through the program, you crushed it, you got 400 points added to your strength score. So you got stronger, you added muscle. What was the experience like uh, being a vegetarian going through the program and, and how did you manage to get protein and, and still get all your, your nutrients? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I think that's probably the biggest challenge or was the biggest challenge of, of dealing with the program was figuring out how we were going to get the calories in, how we were going to reach our protein goals. And part of the reason it uh, was a little easier is because my wife, Annie, joined the program at the same time. And so she's also vegetarian. And so we weren't, you know, in a split household of, of different things we could or couldn't eat. We were basically on the straight and narrow path together. And I think that helped uh, somewhat. Um, I think that, you know, getting creative ultimately is, is what you have to do to get your protein a, as a vegetarian. And so certainly there are food sources, whether it's lentils or beans that are, you know, more natural in terms of a uh, of, uh, of food source where you can get protein but then, you know, there are these protein shakes that exist and I'd be lying if I said I didn't take, you know, kind of these synthetic supplements uh, for, for protein intake. So, you know, protein shakes pre, uh, you know, before or after working out or in the morning, um, you know, there's, you know, fortified protein yogurts, different types of things where, you know, they're kind of whey based. And so whey protein um, is, is probably a little less detrimental in terms of if you were going to go, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a non-organic route for protein intake. Um, so we kind of had to rely on some of those crutches to reach our goals. Um, but I think, you know, I would say the first two weeks of being on the program was absolutely the hardest. Uh, number one is it's the shock to your system from going from a phase of, of relative, you know, sedentary and sedation to, to now all of a sudden you're working out three, four times a week uh, with cardio once a week. That in and of itself, you know, you're getting sore. You're kind of, kind of getting used to working out. But the other aspect of it is 
when you're so used to eating a certain type of way, and now all of a sudden you're tracking everything you eat, it's a little bit of a struggle because you're now tracking macros cons consistently. Um, and, you know, if you really want to be true to form, you're going to basically track everything that you're putting in your body. So we initially were doing that very, very diligently. Uh, and we still do to some level, but we kind of have, have kind of discovered the compass at this point. But at least the first few weeks, tracking things uh, was a little bit of a challenge, figuring out where the food sources are uh, as a vegetarian. So pea protein is the other thing I forgot to mention, but pea protein was a, another thing that we relied on quite heavily um, through the program um, and figure out how we can meal prep because ultimately, you know, you're, you're not just feeding your kids, you're feeding yourselves. And, you know, sometimes it's so much easier, especially pre, you know, pre uh, joining your program where you might just get some fast food or you might do this and that. And it's just an easy way of getting things done, but figuring out what types of meals we could eat and how we could uh, meal prep for the following week was something that we tried to uh, prioritize. And, why I also say the first two weeks are hard. So not just from working out, from figuring out what we're eating, but you're going from eating quite a bit and eating whatever you want to now you're honing it in. Now you're not snacking when you come home from work. So the bag of potato chips I might've eaten after intermittent fasting throughout the day, I'm not eating that anymore. Um, and it's kind of funny because, you know, you end up going a little bit hungry and psychologically, it's a little bit of a hurdle to get over where you feel like you still want to eat. But it's so strange because I feel like going to, having gone through the program, if I look at the same quantities of food that I used to eat before, I almost can't even fathom taking that in in one sitting. You know, it's like Thanksgiving was this past weekend. And so, uh, you know, what I would normally fill my plate with for Thanksgiving, I mean, there's no way I could eat, you know, that same type of serving now. And I don't know if my stomach shrank or just the psychology of it where I know that I'm full or I know it's, you know, going to put me over um, what my uh, caloric or my macro goals might be. Um, but my relationship with food has fundamentally changed. And so kind of a long winded answer of, you know, how was it being a vegetarian? Is it possible? Could I do it? Could we do it? It is possible. I think if, uh, you're in a house where somebody else is in the fitness journey with you. It's going to be significantly easier to do it as a couple. Um, I also think that the challenge is going to be actually getting the ball rolling. But, you know, once you get a, a boulder rolling downhill, you got momentum that keeps it going forward. And so actually getting that initial push, you know, through the first two weeks of the program was probably the hardest point. But once you're in it and when you're in the trenches, um, you know, you don't even think twice. And I, I know I've talked to you a lot about this, but Annie and I like to travel a lot and, and we end up uh, eating at really nice restaurants when we go out. And so sometimes you overeat when you go to these restaurants because they're, you know, eight, nine course meals with wine pairings. And so you got to compensate. So, you know, you overeat for a certain meal and then, you know, the next day or, or maybe the same day for breakfast and lunch, you undereat or, or just fast and don't eat at all. So it's these little kind of... Uh, kind of, uh, you know, com compensatory mechanisms that you just uh, end up figuring out going on the way uh, and, and along the way so that the scale doesn't end up fluctuating widely, um, you know, through the journey. So that's another thing that we kind of figured out on the way. So being vegetarian, it is possible. You can definitely get there. You can still end up eating what you want to eat um, as a vegetarian. But I think, you know, figuring out different concessions that you have to make in order to eat what you want to eat is also kind of part of the same strategy. Wow. There were so many incredible nuggets in, in what you just shared. Uh, so many lessons, so many incredible tips and tricks. Um, first, obviously being, if you have alignment in your household, I think that's so important and, and it's so much easier to go through this journey with somebody else. Of course, there's the community, there's the coaching staff, you have those resources, but if you have people in your own home that are doing this with you, or at least on board, it makes it so much easier. And I couldn't imagine what I would do if if my wife, for example, just wanted to eat pizza and, and drink beer or something every single day, that would be just incredible. Like, I don't know what I would do. Um, but luckily, we have alignment in terms of our values, our health, our fitness and the things that we want to prioritize. And for that reason, we have that sort of accountability to each other. 
and then we're on the same track and we want to go to the same kind of places and eat kind of the, a lot of the same food. So I think that's so helpful. You also talked about building momentum, right? So just getting started. It's going to be difficult at first, yes, but everybody's got to walk through the mud to get to the higher ground. So it's like the sooner you get started, the sooner you can build momentum. And once you build that momentum, now it's really easy to sort of stay in motion. And any one of the things that you talked about, being vegetarian, initially tracking your macros, drinking a lot of water, going from being more sedentary to getting go going, any one of these things could have really derailed somebody completely, but you managed to overcome all of them. What was the mindset initially in those first two weeks that allowed you to kind of push through some of those painful moments, whether it was the hunger or the fatigue or any of these things that, again, on their own could derail somebody and you managed to overcome all of them? How did you do that mentally? I think relying on the community. So having my wife, you know, under the same roof, going through the same thing at the same time was certainly the biggest help because I had somebody that provided instantaneous feedback or um, validation, I guess, because she was going through the exact same thing at the exact same time, but also relying on the community. So this is the other thing I can't stress enough. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who are probably self-driven who might, might be able to be extremely fit by going to a gym and they had the same routine back in high school that carried them through college or their working years and, and they're very self-motivated and can do it. And for somebody like me where I didn't necessarily have that same rubric or framework to begin with, going from you know relative stagnation to actually starting to become active is a huge change, right? So you're, you're going all of a sudden from park to you know third, fourth, fifth gear and you're like really ramping up. And, and to me, Th that's a struggle, you know, going from first to second gear is a big struggle. But once you're going from, you know, second to third, third to fourth, it becomes easier and easier. And I think those initial kind of gear shifts, those initial tough points were, uh, you know, easily overcome by just looking at the community. So the great thing about your community is you have people who are starting the program, you know, around the same time we're starting. You have people who are, you know, a month ahead of us, two months ahead of us. You have people who've completed the program that stayed on as legacy clients. And so you uh, have a wonderful resource right at the tip of your fingers where you can uh, just pose questions, you know, be vulnerable, ask people what they did, use the search bar and, and look pa past posts in the group. I mean, I did that when I first started because I was like, this can't be just me. I can't be the only one that's feeling this hungry going to bed or I can't be the only one that feels like I'm defeated uh, or I couldn't, you know, get through 200 jumping jacks or something, you know, at, at phase one, day four challenge day. Like you, you go through the motions of, of figuring out, you know, um, that this is normal, that it's part of the journey. And I think, you know, tonal as a piece of equipment is certainly revolutionary. Having programs that exist that you can just go through is fantastic, but without having that component of feedback, without having a community that you can rally around that basically can help elevate you and lift you up, I think that's the one shortcoming I would say that that exists with these types of platforms. And what uh, where you kind of bridge the gap with your program is you're able to leverage the community of, of people that uh, have completed the program successfully, people who are currently undergoing the program. And we're able to provide each other feedback, support, and encouragement, you know, especially in the start, because that's oftentimes the hardest part is, is just getting the, you know, the wheel spinning. Absolutely. It's the hardest part. And obviously that's why we emphasize and stress the idea of taking action, right? Action is the difference between dreaming and succeeding, as I like to say, and it's because you got to get started, right? In order to be great at something, you first have to get started and probably be very bad at it. But over time, you're going to get a little less bad and a little less bad. And then one day you're going to be like, hey, I'm actually pretty decent at this. And, and that's just a journey everybody has to go on. I went on it obviously much earlier in my career, but even more recently, just in the last, uh, I would say, 18 months, I really improved my deadlift form. I tore my hamstring about two years ago because my deadlift form was not good. So bad form equaled an injury. Then I had to go through a process of being like, wow, I've been lifting weights for over 20 years. I've been doing deadlifts for over 20 years and doing them badly. I could deadlift over 400 pounds. My form stinks and I get injured. Now I feel like an amateur and I'm basically starting from beginning 
deadlifting with 95 pounds on the bar. And I'm like, I could deadlift over 400 pounds. That was a hit to my ego, of course, but you just have to go through it because that's the journey. There's no other way to get good at deadlifting 350, 400 pounds with good proper form so you don't get injured than to start with a very little weight, which somewhat embarrassing, but you, you just do it. You work on the form, you improve, you improve, you improve. And just with these small iterations and after around 18 months, I was able to get back to the weight I was doing previously, but now with good form and now with less risk of injury. So it's just a process. It's just breaking things down and then iterating on them over and over and over again. And obviously you've done a, a fantastic job with it. So again, I just want to acknowledge you and, and say thank you so much for investing in yourself, for putting in the effort, for putting in the work, for uh, doing this, this interview and, and really communicating so well to people out there what's necessary and required for success. Um, now, I know we talked a lot about psychology, mental fortitude. These are things that you mentioned that you really built along the course of the program. Now, what specifically do you feel like has really changed from where you started to where you are now, you know, mentally and from a psychology standpoint? Yeah, I think um, my relationship with food is totally different, um, you know, now versus uh, pre-program. Um I never considered, again, you know, it goes back to, are you healthy or unhealthy? Are you fit or unfit? And I thought I was healthy, but unfit, but, you know, truthfully, I was probably unhealthy and unfit as well, you know? And so, um, I just thought, you know, Hey, you know, my BMI is normal. I'm normal. I can eat whatever I want. I don't really have to worry. I'm not really going too far up or down on the scale. So I'm okay. And, you know, once I started seeing results, which, you know, as you, take pictures of yourself as you measure your body fat, as you see the changes physically, uh, you know, losing inches on your waist or, you know, gaining muscle mass, uh, you start understanding where your true health may end up actually being and where your, you know, your desired baseline should end up being. And for me, you know, that translated also into what I'm putting in my body and what I'm doing. And so, um, I just became, and I think uh, Annie and I have just become more synchronous about what we choose to eat, how deliberate we are, and when we go out to eat, how we try and compensate for when we are going out to eat to make sure that we're not overdoing anything. And it's something that I thought was going to be so difficult to do because, you know, we got the My Fitness Pal app, and when we first started, we're basically tracking every little thing, and, and we still do to s some level. But after some period of time, it's so you know what macros exist in most of the things that you're eating. And you kind of intrinsically know what's good and what's bad, what you can do and what you can't do. And I think that that psychology, that kind of understanding, which really only came with time and, and came with, you know, utilizing uh, the data that, that's readily available in front of you, but you, you normally don't track but basically tracking that data and, and looking to see what it meant and correlating that with the physical results you see when you're looking in the mirror, that was the biggest game changer for me in terms of psychology. Uh, and it really does just, uh, you know, go beyond your own personal fitness, I think, as well. Because I think, you know, the ideas of, of persevering, you know, we Annie and I both dealt with injuries at various points during the program um, where we had to kind of modify our, our training regimen understanding that uh, that life will throw curveballs at you, even, you know, from a fitness journey uh, or from, you know, a personal or professional journey, there are going to be things that don't always follow the textbooks or there's going to be, you know, things that you deal with that are going to be uh, really a, a moments of adversity. But knowing how to address that uh, at its very basic form when you're in the gym or, you know, working out, it really gives you that mindset to push when you're dealing with something that may not be a, a necessarily a, a physical uh, adverse moment, you know, where you're not getting one last rep up or something like that. But at the same point in time, it's, hey, you know, what do I need to do, uh, you know, to take care of this patient this much better? What is something I need to do to make sure that, um I'm ensuring the best outcome in this given scenario. 
it, 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 the tools that you get, and it sounds so cheesy, but it, to me, it's true. It's, it's the tools that you gain from being under physical adversity and under physical duress actually translate to, you know, the mental fortitude because so much of the physical aspect of getting one last rep up when you're burnt out is the mental aspect of convincing yourself and telling yourself that you can do it. You know, it's the idea that, Hey, I know I might be tired. I know I feel like, you know, my heart rates through the roof right now, but I can push myself and I'm going to be okay. And convincing yourself mentally that you can do it is I think oftentimes the bigger barrier than even what your muscles can do and what, you know, the lactic acids telling you, you can't do it's, it's the uh, actual, uh, the mental part of it. That's the hardest part of that last rep. And so when you can get through that part, I think you can apply it to other aspects of, of adversity that you might be facing in other aspects of your life uh, with the same mentality where it's mind over matter. And so to me, those were things that you know we dealt with to get over injury, uh, to kind of uh, ensure that we were st- staying on that straight and narrow path, following our diet. And there are things that it, it's so funny because it's it's ways that we still kind of use it. You you know there 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 are techniques that you still can use today. You know, and it's awesome. I mean. I never thought going through a a fitness program, I'd come out with tools on the other side that I could apply to my personal life, but it's true. And so to me, having that is just as good as, uh, uh, you know, the, the stats that you read out when we first started the interview. I mean, that's just as important to me because the mental fortitude, the mental toughness to get through those 16 weeks were, are, are still paying dividends even outside of the gym. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. It's, uh, Again, there's just so many lessons there. You're such a good communicator and you're just throwing in these little tidbits here. And I hope people are are listening and really paying attention and they should really rewind and listen to this again because you've just given all, you've given everything. You've literally laid out the blueprint of everything that people need to do, which is focusing on progress, not perfection. Understanding that there's going to be balance. You're going to be able to go out to that Michelin star restaurant and do the wine pairings and all that stuff, but there's going to be a little bit of a tax on that, right? You have taxes that you have to pay in your life, income taxes, state taxes. You go to the store, you got to pay taxes. Well, if you want to do that, well, what are you going to do to compensate? Okay, I'm going to go a little, or a little lower on calories today, or I'm going to fast a little longer. I'm going to get an extra workout in. Like there has to be a bit of a tax on that so that you can achieve balance. And you go a little out of balance in the beginning so that you can kind of counterbalance. And then you get to a point where, okay, now I understand what portions are. I understand how much food I actually need. Whereas a lot of people resist wanting to have all those disciplines in their life early on, whether it's the tracking or doing all these other things, the measurements, the photos. Oh, I don't want to do that. It's too much. But you need to do it for a period so that, again, you can counterbalance. And now once you build the skills, once you build the intuition, once you know now you can execute without having to be quite as dialed in or disciplined because you're going to build those muscles up. And again, you're going to build up those skills. So I think that's really important. And then overcoming injuries, everybody's going to experience some pain, aches, pains, issues. How do you manage that? And again, mindset is more than anything because we've had, we've had clients who've gone through the program who've blown out their knees before in in freak accidents and gone through the program doing upper body only stuff and getting great results. We've had people who've had shoulder surgery in the middle of their program and still did lower body workouts or workouts on one side of their body. You just have to figure out ways of moving forward, uh, which is, is what you're saying. And you had a bit of a knee thing, but we just, we made adjustments. We made substitutions. We've worked around it and you just kept going. I'm not suggesting push through injuries, we don't want to push through the pain. What we want to do is work around the injury. And again, it, there's so much mental, uh, a mental aspect to this. And the last thing I want to mention that you, you talked about, which is kind of like your story. There's this great book called Grits by this author named Angela Duckworth. And she talks about your story. You're creating your story every day. And one of the stories that you created over the course of the program was, I'm tough. I'm disciplined. I can push through. I can overcome despite fatigue and all of these things, I can still show up and I can push myself. And when you push yourself physically and you test yourself and you build that mental fortitude, then when life throws things at you, 
you're so much better and more capable at overcoming those. And I really feel that's uh, something that just about every single person that's sitting in your same seat that does these interviews talks about. And it's something that I learned very early. I struggled with confidence. I struggled with my self-worth. I struggled with, uh, you know, doubt, insecurities, all of these things. And I was able to overcome a lot of that stuff through working out. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the, the best drug, the coolest thing in the world. And that's literally why I'm here is because I want to give that gift to other people. And it just really, it gets me really excited, but it also um, makes me very grateful and thankful to sit here and listen to you share your story. Because again, I, I just can't thank you enough for working hard, for investing in yourself, for trusting me, for, for jumping into the program and being pretty much the perfect client. I could not ask for more. You did exactly as I asked of you every step of the way you executed, you know, despite all these obstacles, you overcame one after another, after another, and I just can't thank you enough. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Thank you so much for being an example to so many people of what's possible. And I know without a doubt that you're inspiring people out there right now to take action, get moving, get their ass off the couch and, and get healthy and get fit so they can live a long, hack, active and healthy, happy life just like you. So thank you for that. I really do appreciate no, that. No, I, I thank you for having me. Thank you for, uh, you know, giving us the opportunity to, to you know, be a part of the program and, and to even share a story, you know, my story today. I mean, the one thing I want to throw in for people listening is I was not the epitome of health. You know, I still don't think I am. I have steps to 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 go, to grow, to get better. Uh, and, and so does everybody. But if I can get off the couch and do it and see those type of results in four months, um, you know, there is no secret sauce. You know, there is no magic pill or anything that you're suggesting. It's all the same things that anybody could probably find themselves on, you know, independently. But it's the community aspect. It's the accountability aspect. It's putting it all together where this program really uh, shines and, and is worth its weight in gold, in my opinion. It's being able to take all these things that we might already know that, hey, you know, we know diet is just as important as exercise. We know that you have to be consistent with exercising. We know that we have to watch what we eat and track our macros. I'm sure that anybody who's ever peripherally been interested in health knows or has at least heard of all those things in some way, shape or form, but actually marrying all of those concepts together and having a community that is also on the same wavelength as you going through the same things at the same time as you and having a supportive coach that's keeping you accountable. That's what you're getting with the program like this. And so for me to say, Hey, if I can lose 20 pounds in four months, if I can put on muscle mass, mass and gain vascularity in my arms. And, and if I can, uh, you know, lose that many inches on my waist. I mean, that is a big win for me. I never thought it was possible. I'm 37 and I'm probably the healthiest I've been at any point in my life right now. And I just would have never thought that that was uh, something that was even fathomable, you know, when I was doing New Year's resolutions back in January this year, you know, but getting into the program this summer and, you know, seeing my progress over time and, and you know, going back to seeing my initial photos the day before I started the program and seeing where I ended at and now seeing where I'm at, you know, a month and a half removed from the program. It's just, it's, it's beyond my, you know, uh, imagination in terms of things that I could fathom that, that could be such a profound change just from a physical aspect of looking in the mirror. But then also, like you said, kind of the, the mental uh, uh, toughness that you've gained along the way and, and how that kind of, uh, bleeds over into your personal life. All of those things are things I would have never expected to achieve going into a program. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a roll of the dice to be quite honest when you do anything like that. But if you're willing to put in the time and invest yourself into something like this, um, you're going to see the results. I, I think if you're going to be honest and, and do what coach asks you to do uh, and rely on the community and, and uh, you know, uh, do what's asked of you, ultimately, you're going to be the biggest winner. And so that's the one thing I wanted to throw in. The best part is you're just getting started. Exactly. And look forward to, you know, we're, we're legacy clients, my wife and I. And so we're looking forward to continuing this journey. And, and uh, you know, fitness is a lifelong journey that, that we're starting to learn now. And, and we 
are very happy with where we're at and are continuing uh, with you moving forward. So, so much, you know, praise to you for that. And so many thanks. We'll leave it there. Thank you again, Deepak. I appreciate you. You're an absolute incredible example. And uh, thank you for doing thanks this. Thanks again, coach. All right, everybody, you heard it. So remember, action is the difference between dreaming and succeeding. So take action today.